moment we have a, a very terrific speaker coming from the U.S., uh, Dorian Marina. And if you if you have seen the the, the brochure that I've already, we have already distributed, he is a journalist from the U from the from New York, and being here for the uh, uh, undertaking a, a series of uh, radio and TV TV uh, session on the radical sessions concerning the, the terrorist problem that we are having here in Asia, uh, and this actually very much coincidence with the. You know the headlines news regarding the, the execution of Amrosi. So we expect that uh, uh, Dorian will have a very different uh, perspective concerning the Indonesian's problem regarding terrorism. Well, the the topic today is reporting on terror and terrorism. And before I get into the complex nature of those terms and what they mean both here and in the states. I'd like to begin with a short story. Late last year, I was walking up 6th Avenue in Manhattan in New York, and it was around lunchtime, and there were lots of crowds, uh, as there often are. Uh, they were thick on the sidewalk. Yellow cabs whizzed by on the street, and hot dog and pretzel vendors, you know, you see them in the movie all the time. Uh, they're really there. So they're on the curbs, and uh, just as I crossed 46th Street, a towering office building came into view. <clears throat> it was still under construction, and the sound of workers from high above echoed into the street. I tucked my head down and waited for traffic in order to cross the street. Just as I got to the other side, a loud crash came from behind me. Heads turned to look in the direction. Then there was another crash, and as we turned, we could see glass shattering into the street. A cab swerved to avoid the glass and slammed into another car. Other cars sped up on the curb, another loud boom. The crowd turned on the sidewalk and began to run. I looked up to see large shards of glass and wood falling from the buildings high above, and people screamed and they ran. A woman in front of me fell to the ground and I, I helped her up by the elbow. Along with another person, I helped the woman into a narrow doorway. People were running and screaming. After the woman was safe, I took out my notebook. I'm a reporter, so. And I turned around. I walked back to the intersection and I began to interview people. As it turned out, a huge construction bin on the top of the floor of the unfinished building had sprung loose and fell towards the ground. And as it fell, it slammed against the side of the building and it broke glass along the way. Thankfully, nobody was hurt in the incident. As I spoke to people, construction workers, office employees, cab drivers, nearly all of them compared the shock and fear that they felt to that of 9-11 or September 11th. Many of them said that their thoughts first turned towards terrorism. It was their first idea of what was happening. I bring up this story because I'd like to emphasize that reporting on terror and terrorism is not only reporting on broad government policies or state programs. It's not only reporting on terrorist groups, the groups themselves. It is also important to include the psychological and cultural aspects of terrorism in all its manifestations. Here we are six years after the attacks on the World Trade Center, and people still retained the event firmly in their minds as a reference point and as a collective experience. In Indonesia, we are about that distance from the 2002 Bali bombings, and today, the consequences of that event are very much current, especially due to the executions, which I'll refer to later in the talk. It's also important to point out, I think, that 38 Indonesians, some of them Muslims, were also killed in the Bali attacks, a fact that is often overlooked in international media accounts of the episode. So reporting terror and terrorism. If I am to speak on this topic, 
I think it is important first to define what it is we mean when we say terrorism. And, and I should add here also that uh, a lot of the resources that I will be referring to are also in that, in that paper that I think a lot of you have, that have websites and um, online resources. So um, I'll point out if there, are, if there are places on there also. So what is terrorism? The political theorist Michael Walzer, author of Just and Unjust Wars, defines terrorism this way. He says it is, quote, the deliberate killing of innocent people at random in order to spread fear through a whole population and force the hand of its political leaders, end quote. This definition helps, I think, but it also brings up some problematic issues. First, one can say that terrorism targets innocent people. Unlike conventional warfare, men and women in uniform are not the focus of violence, but rather civilians. But who is innocent and who is to blame? In the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, for example, both sides call the other side terrorists. This makes things very difficult for journalists as we aim to present the most balanced and unbiased account of events. One American newspaper, the Minneapolis Star Tribune, began to call Palestinian militants suicide bombers instead of terrorists. Their decision, though, was strongly criticized by those in support of Israel. Some have even urged that the term suicide bomber be changed to homicide bomber because the act targets the killing of others. This example speaks to the exactness of language and in journalism, the accuracy of words or images is central to our mission. Second, Michael Walzer's definition of terrorism describes the purpose of terrorism as an act done, quote, in order to spread fear through a whole population and force the hand of its political leaders. Because terrorist acts are designed by definition to be spectacles, to be seen, to be heard, and to be talked about, the media and reporters play a particularly significant role in the endeavor. A bomb attack is not just meant to destroy property or to take lives, as devastating as that can be, but it also sends a symbolic message to the public, and it creates a visual trace that can be played and replayed again and again, like the towers on September 11th. I'm sure we've all seen that image again and again and again. It's not just the incidents of the towers falling, but that imagery that replays in the public's mind. In 2001, there were other targets in the US that could have yielded more casualties. But the terrorists chose the Pentagon because of its symbolic value. When viewers saw the damaged building smoking on television, it was not just a building in Virginia, but the heart of American military and American intelligence.